हे मेडिकोज वेलकम बॅक इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोईंग टू टॉक अबाऊट प्रायमरी ओपन अँगल ग्लाकोमा दिस कंडिशन इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड ॲज क्रोनिक सिम्पल ग्लाकोमा फॉर बेटर अंडरस्टँडिंग प्लीज वॉच अवर प्रिवियस व्हिडिओज ऑन ग्लाकोमा द लिंक गिवन इन अपर राईट कॉर्नर दिस कंडिशन इज मोर कॉमन इन मोर दॅन फिफ्टी इयर्स ऑफ एज द स्ट्रॉंग फॅमिली हिस्ट्री इज अ रिस्क फॅक्टर फॉर दिस कंडिशन बिकॉज इट इज कॅरीड बाय द जीन्स लाईक ऑप्टिन्युरीन वी डी आर थर्टी सिक्स अँड मायो सी दिस जीन्स आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस कंडिशन इन ग्लाकोमा वी नो दॅट देर इज राईज इंट्राकुलर प्रेशर राईट इन अवर प्रिवियस व्हिडिओ वी डिस्कस दॅट इन प्रायमरी अँगल क्लोजर ग्लाकोमा देर इज रिलेटिव्ह पिपिलरी ब्लॉक अँड दॅट्स वाय द अँगल इज नॅरो अँड ड्यू टू दिस देर इज अ ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन इन आउटफ्लो ऑफ द एक्वायस ह्युम बट वॉट हॅपन इन दिस कंडिशन द अँगल इज ओपन राईट सो येस there is a problem in trabecular meshwork so we know that there is a problem in trabecular meshwork let's talk about the pathology so here we have our image right and this is trabecular meshwork now what happened due to some pathological conditions there is a resistance in the flow of aqueous humor due to this resistance gradually there is fibrosis and due to fibrosis so there is blocked in trabecular outflow and that's why there is increased intraocular pressure okay so this gradual fibrosis causes very slow and painless loss of vision so let's talk about the clinical features so first of all what are the symptoms yes there is headache why because there is high intraocular pressure right so that's why there is headache there may be delayed dark adaptation and there can be frequent changes in prebiotic glasses so these are the classical symptoms of this condition now what are the signs what do you think about intraocular pressure it is raised so it is more than 21 mm of hg yes there may be difference in both eyes and this difference is more than 5 mm of hg and there can be diurnal variation and this diurnal variation is more than 8 mm of hg difference what do you think about optic disc changes first of all look over here this is the optic disc and this is the optic cup so what is optic cup optic cup is the white area right look over here this is the white area which is in the center of optic disc in this condition there is raised ratio of cup and disc which is more than 0.5 mm and look over here here we have the vertical cupping and look over here there is loss of a neuroretinal rim there is nasalization of blood vessels in the optic disc there is bionetting sign what is bionetting sign yes when the local thinning of neural rim tissue reaches the disc margin a sharp rim is produced right and if a retinal vessels crosses the sharpened rim it will bend sharply at the edge of the disc creating bionetting at the disc edge so this is the bionetting sign there is peripapillary atrophy and one can see the laminar dot sign what happened there is continued deepening of the cup causes exposure of underlying lamina cribrosa which is often recognized by gray fenestrae of lamina it can be seen on direct ophthalmoscope as a gray dots this is referred as laminar dot sign let's talk about the visual field defects visual field defects appear only after about 40% of the axons been damaged the earliest visual field defect is isopter contraction but it having limited diagnostic value because it can occur in some other conditions okay so the clinically significant visual field defect is paracentral scotoma it can be appear either below or above the blind spot in germs area this is the germs area and look over here in purple dot this is the paracentral scotoma what is scotoma yes a spot in the visual field in which vision is absent or deficient after passage of time paracentral scotoma join the blind spot to form a sickle shape scotoma known as sidel scotoma then there is arcuate or germ scotoma in which the sidel scotoma extend 
either above or below the fixation point to reach the horizontal line. So this is arcuate or Jerome scotoma. Then there may be ring or double arcuate scotoma in which the two arcuate scotomas join together and there may be central scotoma and at last there may be loss of temporal island of vision. Let's revise it quickly. So first of all there is paracentral scotoma then it's joined to the blind spot and then it forms serial scotoma. After that the serial scotoma extends to the horizontal line and form the arcuate or gerund scotoma. Then two arcuate scotomas form double arcuate scotoma or it is also called as ring scotoma. There may be central scotoma and at last there is loss of temporal island of vision. Let's talk about management. Management part is divided into two units that is medical one and surgical. In medical what we can do is we can increase the outflow or we can decrease the production. In medical management the first category is PGE2 alpha analogs. The examples are latanoprost and bimatoprost. So the mechanism of action of PGE2 alpha analogs is they increase UVO scleral outflow. The second one is beta blockers. Beta blockers decrease aqueous secretion as receptor present on ciliary process. So their mechanism is decrease the production. The third one is alpha agonist. The examples are apraclonidine and brimonidine. Apraclonidine reduces aqueous secretion and increases trabecular outflow. And brimonidine reduces aqueous secretion and increases uvo scleral outflow note over here apraclonidine increases trabecular outflow and brimonidine increases uvo scleral outflow you can note this point because this might be asked in your pg entrance exam and the fourth one is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor yes the examples are acetazolamide brimzolamide dorzolamide and their mechanism of action is they decrease aqueous secretion so this is the medical management. Now in surgical management we have laser trabeculoplasty in which we use argon and NDAG laser. The second one is trabeculectomy. We can do deep sclerectomy and the fourth one is set on surgery. If you want to learn in details about these surgeries please comment in below section. Let's revise it quickly. So first of all we talk about the genes which are responsible for these conditions like optinurine, VDR36, MyOC. Then we talk about pathology of this condition in which there is fibrosis in trabecular meshwork which block the outflow of aqueous humor and there is raised intraocular pressure. Then we talk about the clinical features, headache, delayed dark adaptation and there is frequent changes in prebiotic lenses. Then we talk about the signs in which the intraocular pressure which is more than 21 mm of Hg. Then we talk about the optic disc changes in which vertical cupping, loss of neuroretinal rheum, there is bionetting sign, laminar dot sign, yes these are some major features. Then we talk about the visual field defects in which we talk about paracentral scotoma, sidal scotoma, gerund scotoma, double arcuate scotoma, central scotoma, yes. Then we talk about management in which medical and surgical. In medical management we focused on increased outflow and decreased production. PGE2 alpha analogs are used to increase the EVO scleral outflow while beta blockers are decreased aqueous secretion because the receptors are present on ciliary process. Alpha agonist like apraclonidine and brimonidine used to reduce the secretion and increase the outflow. And Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like acetazolamide, brinzolamide, dorzolamide are used to decrease the secretion. Then we talk about the surgeries like laser trabeculoplasty, trabeculectomy, deep sclerectomy and set on surgery. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for our next upcoming videos on next PG preparation.